Like many metro areas, Northern Virginia has witnessed both the growth and evolution in gang activities. Uh, what we've seen in the last four or five years is gangs morph to a more sophisticated and more complex type operation. Early on, we're seeing uh, the colors displayed on a regular basis and uh, the gang affiliation signs, etc., cetera, were, were very obvious. Now it's more of a covert thing. They've changed the tactics. Uh, tattoos are being removed. They don't wear the colors. Northern Virginia has responded to this changing threat through a partnership of local and federal law enforcement, and it's yielding results. seem to be learning more about the connections to El Salvador and other places outside of the country. What we've been seeing is a large influx of individuals that we've never had any contact with before. A lot of them are gang members in their country or in other parts and they're coming here to try to fill in where we're taking out large chunks of the gang. They're extremely organized. They're transnational now. When somebody commits a violent crime, they're not sticking around and waiting to be picked up. They have a network where they can get them out of here and go to New York, or get them out of here and go down to Georgia, and it happens fast, you know, within a couple days. The Northern Virginia Regional Gang Task Force was formed to provide the jurisdictions with another layer of resources that could be used to combat this new and emerging gang problem. It is staffed by 14 officers from four counties. Uh, officers are sworn as state officers, and they're able to cross jurisdictional boundaries. Sometimes they're surprised when we're, I come across these guys maybe two or three counties over, and the first thing they look at me and they, what are you doing here? Hey, wherever you go, I go. Additionally, it marshals resources for any jurisdiction, whether it be a very large jurisdiction such as Fairfax County, or some of our smaller jurisdictions that may have populations of six or 7,000. The Gang Task Force serves as a force multiplier where they can go in, show the presence, and take the action that's necessary. Police search warrant! We're trying to you know, concentrate our efforts on taking down entire cliques, you know, 15 to 20 guys at a time, rather than just trying to move them off the street corner. The federal component, both on the enforcement side and the prosecution side is very important. Federal government has some resources that local governments don't have. The regional task force here is plugged into several different federal agencies. What we're finding is instead of charging them with small local crimes, we're rolling these into larger federal Vicar and RICO cases where these guys are getting put away for 25 to life. Prevention and intervention for us in Northern Virginia are is equally important to the suppression side. We're doing that through public relations programs, public education programs, and working through the schools, particularly to alert parents about the risk of gang activity and the risk of their children getting involved. These guys get requested all the time to do gang presentations. They educate all the local agencies, the neighborhood watch, you know, your various schools. With the task force, we're able to make sure that we can share resources so that one jurisdiction who may not have some type of intervention or prevention program, now everybody has access to it. The task force shares resources internationally at gang task force conferences, where law enforcement throughout the U.S., Mexico, and Central America share intelligence and coordinate action. And it's beginning to pay dividends. We have been very successful in, in keeping a lid on, on gang activity. We recently had an assessment completed of the last five years of gang activity here in Northern Virginia, and it showed about a 17 to 20 percent decrease in all levels of gang reported crime. Overall, the task force has been a great asset. I think they've done an excellent job of uh, working closely with the individual units to make sure that they truly are supplementing the uh, local jurisdiction. The larger agencies allow the smaller agencies to have an a, a equal voice, and that builds trust. Our name is out there, and we've been successful because we do share the information. For the longest time, law enforcement it has that, that, that stigma that they want to hold on to it instead of sharing. Ours is no boundaries. Our knuckleheads are going to be your knuckleheads eventually, so let's get rid of them now.
The key focus for law enforcement has to be that gangs are a community problem. The only way we're going to deal with it is a coordinated, multi-function, multi-discipline, multi-jurisdiction approach.